less cheating. No. It's time to take a wild ride back to the past. Sit back and relax and enjoy this episode of Only Lane. Atsushi Odida can only mean one thing. We're playing Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling on the Super Famicom. Released in 1993 by Pony Canyon. I had no idea that this game even existed. I played plenty of wrestling games, but I had no idea that an FMW wrestling game actually existed until recent. So I purchased it on eBay. And I look at that nice label art right there featuring Atsushi Anita. Look at that. Now, just in case you don't know what Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling was, uh, you know, it was a classic hardcore wrestling promotion that was founded by Asushi Anita back in 1989 over in Japan. You know, just so you know, uh, Asushi Anita has experienced more explosions than your typical Vietnam vet. So I can just imagine he has plenty of Vietnam flashbacks. Or should I say FMW flashbacks? Uh, FMW specialized in death matches, fire, barbed wire, and weapons, and, and they even uh, occasionally had poisonous snakes as weapons and spiders or whatever the hell else they could use. In fact, some of their matches were so dangerous that they actually had to build a platform over a pool far, far away from the crowd in order to keep the crowd away from the ring because the matches were too dangerous for anyone to be close to the ring. That's how crazy FMW was. It was nuts. It was literally a deathmatch promotion. You would have to go on YouTube and type in FMW matches and you'll see. See for yourself. Now back in the mid 90s, uh, FMW worked with uh, our localized ECW hardcore promotion. Uh, you saw the likes of Sandman, Rob Van Dam, maybe Tommy Dreamer, you know, all those guys eventually worked briefly in FMW as well. In 1995, Shoishi Eri, I don't know if I got that name correct, but forgive me if I don't. Uh, he became the promoter of FMW and uh, reportedly funded FMW with Yakuza money, which is, that's not good. That's not a good idea. Uh, the FMW also became very famous over in the United States for having Terry Funk vs. Cactus Jack death matches. Uh, very, very, very legendary famous death matches over in Japan. Uh, Mike Awesome regularly wrestled in FMW, if you guys are familiar with Mike Awesome. Uh, definitely an American wrestler, big guy, he's a great wrestler for a big guy, unfortunately he passed away uh, maybe a decade ago. And one of the greatest high flyers of all time, Hayabusa, wrestled in FMW up until the point where he became paralyzed during a uh, 2001 match. Now, unfortunately FMW Maybe it's not unfortunate. It was probably a good thing. FMW went out of business in uh, 2002 due to uh, bankruptcy with the Yakuza, I guess. And, uh, Soshi Eri, the guy that was the promoter, he actually hung himself. So I guess he was that afraid of the, of the, uh, the Yakuza. FMW was reestablished in 2015. I have no idea what the new FMW is. I've never seen it. Uh, the only thing I know is the old one was really, really crazy. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see. Now, as far as the Super Famicom FMW game goes, which I had no idea even existed, uh, you had five playable characters. One of them was hidden. So, of course, the first playable character was Anita Asushi. Uh, the second one was Tarzan Goto. The third playable character, Fuji Riki. The fourth, Asako Sambo. Uh, the hidden character was a female character, Kobo Megumi. Now, I don't know if I pronounced those correctly or not, but yeah, you have a total of five playable wrestlers in this uh, hardcore wrestling game. Alright, so we have the game started with... What the hell is that? Whatever that is, it has red eyes and it has a purple... Uh, it, do it doesn't look like a wrestling game, I can tell you that much. And, uh, so this is pre-recorded footage, uh, yeah, I usually don't edit my memory lane videos like this, but unfortunately this game is so hard that I had to chop it up in order to uh, get bits and pieces. And this is the uh, title screen right here. 
and get some. Uh, we got a Monita at sushi right there, and you got the uh, other female wrestler right there that I mentioned before. Got the nice little FMW logo right there. Check that out. And the Pony Canyon right there in the bottom. Copyright 1993. Uh, the, that is actually one of the uh, characters that you battle. And uh, one thing that's interesting about this wrestling game is it's actually not a wrestling game. I was a little disappointed to find out that it's actually not a wrestling game. It sort of is, but it's not. You'll see in a second. It's, it's more of a fighting game than a wrestling game, featuring wrestlers. But it, they actually kept a little bit of the deathmatch elements to the game. So if you bump into the perimeters of where you're fighting, you can actually explode or something's going to happen to you. But you'll see in a, in a brief second once I uh, decide to start the game here. And once again, this is pre-recorded, so... I'm going to probably skip along and uh, show you guys uh, some footage of this game. Uh, this game, I definitely could not beat this game. I'm pretty decent with fighting games, uh, but this one in particular was very, very difficult. I'm not even kidding. I mean, wait till you see this. You got the uh, guy right there, M. With the big M in the background, it kind of looks like something from a uh, demolition or something like that. All right, so I think we're about to start. That's the. Uh... All right. Finally, gonna start the game here. Got Onira Asoshi. And uh, there's your playable characters right off the bat. You choose one of those four, and there's a fifth hitting character that you can eventually get if you uh, know how to play the game that well and it's definitely not not an easy game to play. So we're going to choose Onita Asushi as you see right there and the first guy that we're playing kind of looks like E. Honda, the big fat sumo wrestler. Big fat ass. Let's we'll see if we can uh, perform some hardcore wrestling maneuvers and weapons. So right away, the first match appears to be a sumo wrestling match, <laughs> and that's uh, not what you're really used to seeing with uh, FMW. FMW usually has some really explosive death matches, like some crazy stuff. So as soon as I started playing this, I was like, what the hell is this? And then BAM! We got explosions! See, that's uh, that kind of satisfied me a little bit right there. Some punching and kicking. It, it, the moveset seems a bit limited. You can't really do too much in this game. It looks like it did a what appears to be a DDT or something like that. You can't really do too many moves, but then again, this is not. Oh my god, what the hell was that? And the funny thing is, you can see the monorail train driving by really fast in the background. You can actually hear it through the uh, Super Famicom sound. It's pretty funny. We got something going on. Oh, DDT, what the hell? Nah, I think he's done. I think I kicked his ass. Barely, look at my life meter. That's just a great example of how hard this game is. Yeah. yeah. Took that, you son of a bitch. The, uh, the background music kind of resembles something from like Street Fighter 2. I got blown up. Oh, he blew himself up. Haha, <laughs> what the hell was that? Yeah, okay, see me. This is though this kind of resembles for me like a 2D version of a virtual fighter. Which actually does exist on the Genesis or the 32X. Actually the Genesis that it is. 32X actually has a real 3D version of Virtual Fighter, but the Genesis actually has a 2D version. I blew myself up, oh man. In, uh, in a typical Onita Asushi fashion, I got back up after being set on fire. 
and he blew himself up too. He's a very, very hardcore sumo wrestler. And oh, he punched me in the face and knocked my teeth down my asshole. And you see how this game is so far. That well, a bit of an earthquake there. What the hell? Alright, so this guy is pretty hard. And as you advance on in this game, it just gets harder and harder. Because it's probably one of the most hardest fighting games I've ever played. Oh my god! Face first, man. So the one thing that's not so far not quite satisfying in this game, as far as I can see, is that it, it doesn't feel like a wrestling game to me. I mean, uh, if they really had a wrestling ring or you know the same environments that FMW actually had, I'd be a lot more happier playing this game. But yeah, I just got my ass kicked. Eventually, once you win. Uh, the, the volcano in the background erupts. Like, all oh, hell breaks loose. It's, it's crazy. Look at that. I mean, what the hell is this game about? And then eventually you end up fighting this guy. That, uh, I guess he's a pilot for uh, the Air Force over in Japan. And he, he can't stop tri pumping. Look at this. I mean, what the hell is wrong with this game? And, uh, yeah, it... it background definitely looks like a ripoff to Street Fighter 2. You definitely see all the chats and stuff like that. Now, eventually you fight like a, a boxer that kind of resembles, I don't know, maybe Mike Tyson. I have no idea who the hell they're trying to rip off there. Maybe they just created their own character. But the cool thing about the, the boxing level is they actually have an FMW wrestling ring in a, what appears to be some sort of steel cage. And the cage, I believe, is electrified. So finally, we get an FNW wrestling ring with an elect electrified cage. And that's pretty freaking awesome. So if you make it to that particular stage in the game, you'll be happy. I mean, I was pretty happy playing that stage. Got my ass kicked, but hey, it took forever for me to actually make it that far. But wait, I actually, I actually made it to the fourth stage. And on the fourth stage here, you actually battle some bizarre looking guy, I don't know what the hell he's supposed to be, but his name is D-Love, like Dude Love almost, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Well, you battle him on the rooftop, and all of a sudden he turns into this really, really bizarre looking, I don't know what the hell that is, but it's so bizarre that I've never seen anything like that before. He looks like he has a giant polka dot penis on his freaking head. I mean, I, I, I'm not kidding, just look at it. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be, but he freaking killed me. And uh, that was my uh, my experience with the FMW game. Like, I couldn't get past that point. I got slaughtered by that thing. I don't know what to call that thing, but... It was really weird. <laughs> and I did not expect to see any of this in the FMW wrestling game. I was expecting to see a wrestling game with weapons, explosions, and all that stuff. Uh, we did have some explosions, and we did have one stage that had an actual FNW cage and ring, which was pretty cool. Uh, there was no weapons, uh, so... Uh, I don't want to be, be overcritical on the game. I mean, it was somewhat fun to play, but... Wait a minute, did he just flip me off? So, yeah. That's FMW on the Super Famicom, and there's quite a few other, maybe three or four other stages past this point that I couldn't even make it to, but uh, I'm pretty sure someone on YouTube did a playthrough and somehow they managed to beat the game. I don't know how, but yeah, it's pretty damn hard. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below.